go, church. We thank you for tuning in with us wherever you're at this morning around the world. We welcome you to come and worship Jesus with us this morning.
thank you for this morning. We just ask that you just drown us in your love, God, and that your presence floods this place.
Hey, Go Church. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. We're so grateful uh, to be able to celebrate what the Lord is doing all together. Um, we're just going to jump straight into some announcements this morning. First, we have our soap devotionals that you can find online on Facebook. These are just an encouraging word every day from our Go Church leadership team. Um, it's so great to be able to look at those. So I um, really encourage you to check those out. Next, we have our online virtual lobby every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. What a great way to, for us to get together, even though we can't be facing to face we can be face to screen and get to see each other um, every every Sunday morning before service starts and so um, as you log into those on Sunday morning please be patient with us um, we're still working out some kinks in our system and so if you can find the link to the lobby every Sunday morning on our Facebook page um, next we are going to be moving into our new building we're so excited um, to be in there we're shooting to move in there sometime uh, in June so really excited about that um, next we have youth we have our 
are e-groups that are just going so strong um, in youth. If your uh, youth isn't a part of an e-group, get in contact with us. We want to get them plugged in and be a part of an e-group. Uh, e um, and then lastly, we have our offering. Um, we have three different ways to give here at Go Church. We have our uh, online giving, we have our text to give, and then we have our mail-in giving as well. If you're interested in mailing in your, uh, your tithe or your offering, um, the address for that is here on the screen. Um, thank you so much for just continuing to be faithful and continuing uh, to be obedient um, to what God has called us to do. And so uh, we hope that the rest of the service is a blessing to you and your family. We hope that this week is a great one for you. We hope to see you soon. Welcome, Go Church, and the families around the world that are hearing this. Thank you for joining us. Robin's in the house this morning. She's going to be preaching the word. Excited about that. As always, we begin our services by praying for Belize, by praying for LifeNet Church. They are walking through what we're walking through. And so praying for Yasha, uh, praying for Marla's as well. We want to be praying for the jobs of our people, the, the anxieties and the stresses that are going on within the families around the Katy area, as well as praying that God would stop this virus. And so as you can see behind me, we have a new picture board. Uh, before Easter, it was black and white, but because of the light of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, they have all become anew and they are colorful and bright and as every week we are praying for you we are loving on you know that you have a congregation that's praying for you so let's pray so father i i thank you for today i thank you for the word that's going to be preached i thank you that it will impact lives this morning father father we pray for life net church as they are navigating this pandemic like we are we ask that you would encourage them that you would build them that you would use this season to strengthen uh, their faith like never before. We pray for Yasha and Marla's as they minister to the girls there, Father. And Father, we just, uh, we just bless them and bless Elizabeth that's there, God. And Father, we just pray for the Go Church family. Uh, we pray as they are walking through this season that you are teaching them things and showing them things. Father, we pray for the families that's uh, lost their jobs and uh, are walking through that. We ask that you would encourage them, that you would provide for every uh, single need that they have. We pray for the anxieties and stresses of not only the Go Church families, but all the families in the Katy community and around the world that are dealing with this journey. And Father, would you mold us in this season? And would we come out stronger in you than ever before? And Father, we pray that this virus would be stopped. We pray that we would come back to normalty, but not normalty of what we had in the past, something anew and afresh. We bless each and every one of these families. God, we love them. We ask that your favor would be upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good morning. I want to begin by thanking you guys. Last week, as we celebrated Easter in our home, it was a very special time, actually, as a family. Um, just during the worship, I really felt God's presence in a very powerful way, as I hope all of you did. But then as we were preparing lunch, and quickly everybody was working, we were getting things ready, and Kaylee came in and said, hey, we need to run outside. And we got the best surprise as Go Church. Many of you came and did a parade in front of our home. And we were just overwhelmed. We were overwhelmed with love. We were overwhelmed to feel so loved. And um, what a blessing to get to pastor a body that cares about us. So when Lee asked me to share, um, at, immediately, I felt like the Lord just gave me something. And... Um, what I wanted to share about this morning is what is God trying to teach us in this season? We cannot go through this life without trials. We live in a world that is broken. And so we will deal with sickness. We will deal with sadness. We will deal with loss. Um, we will deal with um, some people right now are dealing with not having a job. And many, many of the people that are watching this, you are going through trials in one form or another. And I don't believe God sends these trials. But I do think it's an opportunity for us to return our focus to the Lord. And that as believers, that is where we should run. And so that's a lot about what I'm going to talk about this morning. What is he doing? What can I learn? What can, what can God refine in me during this time? 
In 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10, Paul is, I'm talking about God, and he says, And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and needs and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And I know for myself personally, when I have gone through the hardest seasons of my life and I have felt weak, it's when God within me is all I had. And that is when I really felt his strength in my life. And so um, each of y'all are dealing with this season in a different way. Some of you are busier than ever, especially those that are working on the front lines. Um, you are walking into risk every single day. And um, there's a lot of pressure that you're feeling from that. But then there's other people that they're bored and they're trying to figure out how to fill their days and they love their children, but they're not used to having their children so much and being limited and not being able to go out and do the things that we normally do. Um, but God is with us. He's with us wherever we're at, wherever, um, whichever extreme that we're at. If we're at home and feeling lonely and missing being with people, or if we're just exhausted because we feel like we are just running like crazy, then wherever we're at, God is with us in the midst of that. In our weakness, He is strong. So we have two choices. We can become bitter or we can become better during this time. We can get through the season angry that our comfortable life was messed up, right? Or we can take this time to really seek God and to really just find those times and, and, and spend that time with the Lord. So three ways that I feel that we can learn is we can learn, first of all, through reading God's word. Now more than ever, your Bible is your oxygen. And I think about it this way. When we're on an airplane and they say, put your oxygen on first and then put it on your children. We can't minister to our family, to our parents, to our siblings until we've put on the word, until we've put on our oxygen. And so um, that is what you need to be doing. God's word is alive and it's relevant to what we're going through. That's the thing I love about no matter what season we're in, it's very relevant to what we're walking through. And so Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So his word is living. His word is relevant. I have, in, pre in preparing for this message, I have really gotten, um, been studying the book of Daniel, reading it very slowly and just absorbing some of the truths that are in there that even to me apply so much right now about us standing up for the Lord and us going to that quiet place. I mean, he had to go into a den of lions because he was going to his quiet place and finding the Lord. And that is... We need to realize that these are the times that we need to be even closer to the Lord. Um, we have been putting up soaps every um, day, we, except for on Sunday, we put up a soap. Part of the reason we do that, we want to just remind you and to encourage you about being in the Word. And um, as leaders, there's just one little section maybe that we'll share on that the Lord points out to us. But I encourage you to read that passage yourself and let God speak something fresh directly to your spirit that he has for you. And we are just there as a reminder just to help you and to encourage you. The second way that I think we learn things is through experiences. Um, at Christmas time, there's always lots of um, things out there that say kids don't learn or kids don't remember their best day of television. And as a mom of five kids, I absolutely agree with this. The best thing that we can give our children is our time, whether it's taking them on a little trip, which of course we can't do right now, but, um, or sitting and doing a craft with them or playing a game with them, or like Lee has been playing basketball nonstop with the girls outside. Those are the things that we learn through our experiences. And so right now we are walking through a very difficult experience, no matter 
what our situation there it's just different our lives are different and this is an opportunity that our children are watching us and it's okay for them to see us have a hard time but they also need to see us run to Jesus and they need to see us get healing so this is an experience that we will tell our children I mean well our children are living it but our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren about the second thing, when we took our um, two oldest children to Israel in 2007, um, they were about eight and 11, Josh and Tori. And I remember being nervous, you know, here taking our kids on the other side of the world. There was a little bit of danger or risk involved in it. But it is an experience that not only changed their life, but it changed my life. When I, when I look back to 2007 before that and after that, how the word of God became alive to me after walking the streets, walking the places where Jesus walked. It, um, it made the Bible so much easier for me to understand. And that wouldn't have happened in such a deep way just from watching videos on TV or hearing somebody tell me about it. It was something I had to experience myself to have understanding. The next example I wanted to share was we... Um, our family moved to Belize for seven and a half years. That experience is so deep in our hearts and who we are. In fact, Lee and I actually became Belizean while we were there. Belize will forever be a part of our heart and a part of our life. We have two children that are Belizean. But unless you've gone on a mission trip or you've lived there, you don't understand when we would say, oh, that detergent, it smells like Belize. Or this food, there's no freshness like the food that we would get from the market. There's no hot like living in Belize. In fact, right now, I know they are so hot and they're sweating. And in Texas, we can't comprehend that because we have AC. But in Belize, it's just this experience. And the people, there's nothing like the people. I miss our friends at LifeNet and, and just the other friends that we had in Belize. And they're just such a special people. But unless you lived there, you wouldn't have experienced. But that experience in me, um, we also had some hard things that we went through. And during those times, that's where I really learned to get away with Jesus and let Jesus be my soul healer, my soul protector, my everything. And so our experiences develop who we are. Let this experience do that for you. None of us would choose this pandemic. It's devastating. Some people have lost loved ones. Um, many people have lost jobs. There's a lot of anxiety and fear that people didn't have six months ago that now they're, they're walking through. But what an opportunity for us to run to Jesus and look back and say, God was with us. God protected us. God was our everything during that time. Use this experience. Let God teach you what he wants to teach you. Well, I have some good news. In Isaiah 43, 1 through 3, it says, But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. We are, we are God's children. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. Nor shall the flame scorch you. But I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Saba in your place. The same Jesus that was moved with compassion to heal people, to help people in distress, is the same Jesus that is walking through this pandemic with us. And there is such a comfort in that. We can come out of this pandemic beat up, frustrated, um, angry at God, or we can come out victorious like Daniel walked out of the lion's den. We can walk out knowing who our God is. Daniel 6, 21, after he had been in the um, lion's den and um, he came out and Daniel said to the king, Oh, king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O oh, king, I have done no wrong before you. 
Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury was found on him because he believed in his God. Declare over your family that God will spare us from the lion's den of COVID-19 and speak life and health over your families. The third way is we learn directly from God. He pours wisdom into us. He speaks to us in a still, small voice. I was speaking to one of my friends, and um, she was telling me about how she's kind of shut down some of the apps because they're distracting and trying not to watch the news. And she said, but part of the reason is God's voice is quiet. And when I have all that busyness clouding, I can't hear. And that really has stayed with me that if I want to hear God's voice, I have to get into a quiet place. And it's challenging. I have a full home. I understand. But that is where we will find that secret place with the Lord. What does sitting at Jesus' feet look like? Matthew 6, 6 says, But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. For me, during this season, my closet has literally become my prayer closet. I have gone in there and I have shut the bedroom door, the bathroom door, and the closet door and turned on the fans so that I can go in and I can have some time with Jesus. And I need that. And I feel that I need it in a greater way in the busyness of this season and just being able to refocus and refocus on what God says and refocus on what his word says, even just going into worship. And, and um, no matter what season you're in, even if you have small children, you know, one of my memories are, of raising little children is our kids were always a part of it. Our, we didn't always have our kids go to another room. Our kids were right in the midst of it in the midst of God working, in the midst of God doing things. And part of that, that creates when they're exposed to mom and dad truly experiencing Jesus, that creates a hunger in them because they want that same thing. And I remember um, in um, Y2K when we thought the world was going to end and, you know, we didn't really, but some of us did. And uh, so we had an all night prayer meeting. And at the time, Josh and Tori were about one and three. And I remember um, being at that building and praying and we had actually taken like some blankets and sleeping bags for them to fall asleep. But our kids were right in the midst of it. Our kids were right in the midst of that prayer meeting. They were right in the midst of us worshiping the Lord. And so you as parents, you can do that, even if you have small children. And um, I love this picture because it just shows, you know, the little um, child is laughing and not probably closing their eyes properly, but it's okay because they're seeing mom and dad and they're, they're being a part of, of what we should be doing. Yes, I'm challenging you. Right now, your home, your living room is the church. And so you are the pastor. And take this opportunity because what a blessing. What I think about our children, um, all of our children, we have been able to pour into them um, spiritually. And that is such an honor as a parent. So take advantage of that opportunity. Church is different right now for us too. We miss everybody. Sunday is an exciting day when we get up. We can't wait to go see all our friends at Go Church. And we just come to our living room and see all the people that we're living with every day. So it's a little bit different. But it's also been a very special time as the sermon has ended. And we've had a discussion time. Because honestly, on Sunday morning, we don't do that. You know, we get busy. We go out to lunch. And we all come home and take a nap. But this has been a time for us as a family where we've been able to come and, and, and just see how our kids are doing and, and, and see what, you know, God is speaking to them. We've had um, some times of um, prayer and worship before they go to bed that have been very powerful because we have the time to do it now. And so take advantage of this opportunity, what the Lord's trying to teach us. Don't miss it. In conclusion, I just wanted to... Um, say, so, you know, we have three different ways that I feel that we learn from the Lord during this um, time. We learn through reading God's word. We learn through um, the experience, the experience itself. We're learning something because all of us, our life is different. 
And we also learn directly from God, from sitting at his feet, asking him, God, tell me what you want. Talk to me. I'm going to end with prayer, and then um, Pastor Lee is going to come and have some closing thoughts. God, I just thank you for each and every person who is listening this morning. I pray, Father, that something that I have said um, would um, be a blessing that, that as they, um, they are in this time that is different and uncertain, Father, that it would be a time that they just feel your presence in their homes, in their lives, in such a powerful way, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. I hope this message blesses you as it did uh, us in this room. Robin, you did an amazing job. Uh, if this message blessed you, would you do two things? One, would you just message us and let us know? We just love to hear what God speaks to you through these messages. Uh, share on the YouTube post or share on the Facebook post uh, down below the video. I love the interactions that go on every Sunday morning. And, and please, please, please uh, just let us know uh, what it speaks to you. Secondly, if you would share it on Facebook. Go ahead and put your tagline up there on how it ministered to you. We have had uh, families share it with families literally in other countries and those other countries, uh, those families in other countries have listened to the word and mess this, mess, messaged us back to let us know that they have been ministered to. So please share this. What a way for us to shine the light of Jesus during this time. And there are four questions in just a moment when you stop this video. It's up on Facebook or you can just pause the video and back up a little bit. We have four quick questions for you to sit down. Please do it with your kids. As Robin talked about, what a great opportunity that we get to be the pastors of our home. We get to minister to our, our, our family and really interact about what God is speaking through these messages on Sunday morning. And these are the questions. What is God teaching you in this season? Number one. Number two, how is God using the Word to teach you in this season? Because we hope you're in the Word. We hope you're digging in and God is comforting you and exciting you about what your future looks like. And so what is God speaking from His Word directly to you? Number three, how has this past uh, experience, how has past experiences shaped you? Robin talked about uh, going to Israel. She talked about how Belize has shaped us. How has past experiences that you have have walked through in your life shaped you? How has God used that to shape you? And along that same question, how could God use this pandemic to shape you and mold you? Could God be using the season to uh, cause you to dig deeper? Will you come out of this season the same you that you were a month ago? I don't think so. I think God wants to speak into your life. And number four, the last question, in your quiet times with Jesus, yes, you can turn on, you can close your bedroom door, you can close your bathroom door. You can close the closet door and turn on the fans and just have a good time with Jesus. And in those quiet times, and maybe those quiet times aren't so quiet, what is Jesus speaking to you? Because I believe he is speaking in this hour. This is our word to you. Go church. It is time for us to go and shine the light of Jesus. God bless you.